Because I'm shock in the radio. Y'all get your lazy asses out of bed. It's 7:33. Don't say the word penis anymore. Fag, you queer, you homo. <laughs> and there's some of the most listened to shows on Moby. the radio. I got, a, I, got, I got a guy I call up in, uh, in Chicago. I call him my attack Jew. He handles yeah, my career. It's clearly indecent. I'm getting a boner. <laughs> but is it also oh, an expression of free speech? Good evening. I'm Ted Koppel, and this is Nightline. Yeah, she's a Texas bitch. She's young and rich, and she never It's vulgar. It's offensive. But is the FCC's move to crack down on shock radio a violation of the First Amendment? And the federal government can kiss my fat boy country butt, too. That's our focus tonight. Okay. A few preliminary observations about shock radio. It is, ironically, an outgrowth of Reagan appointees to the Federal Communications Commission. In particular, its chairman until last week, Mark Fowler. Mr. Fowler is a great believer in deregulation and letting the marketplace take care of itself. Well, in this instance, the marketplace has put an enormous premium on sexual innuendo, double entendre, what used to be called bathroom humor, and in some cases, plain old smut. Disc jockeys who weave this kind of material into their programming have been rewarded with higher ratings and their stations have made a lot of money. A lot of money. You would also be making a mistake, however, if you didn't take into account that some of the material is creative and can be very funny. But does it belong on the radio? Especially when its target audience is often very young indeed. Here's Nightline correspondent James Walker. You are listening, along with a quarter of a million other people, to the top-rated morning radio show in Dallas. This is Shock Radio, and is it popular? Y'all get your lazy asses out of bed. It's 7.33. Since last October, when Moby first began mouthing off, his show has moved from fifth in the market to first. I'm getting a boner. <laughs> A 60-second commercial that used to cost $175 today goes for $275. He's a funny guy. He's like your little brother. You know, every once in a while you want to swat, swat him and shut him up, but mostly he's just harmless. That guy is a jerk! <laughs> you fag, you queer, you homo! <laughs> they should pass urine in your coffee, my friend. That's what they should do. I speak in your coffee. And this is the king of shock what? radio, Howard Stern. Turns out they wanted to come down here and just shoot some footage of us on the air, and I told them to go screw off. Forget it. Yeah. Get it out of the file. For years, Stern has been bantering with call-in listeners about sexual acts and the size of sexual organs. Sir, I say penis. I say wreck them on the air. How much more leeway do you think they can give me before they all lose their license? It's a format that's brought financial rewards. WXRK-FM's ratings have jumped from 22nd in New York City when Stern began in early 1986 to fourth today. I think he's a very rare talent. He's funny, he's great, and he's not mature. And that's what I like in a good person. That's right. Now, wait a minute. Suppose you got a call from the FCC itself that said, uh, knock off the perversion. Your mama. Suppose you got a call that said, uh, we can't talk about bottle leaf hugs. Uh, Your mama. You mean to tell me and in the nation's capital, the Grease Man has hooked so many listeners that in the past three years, his ratings have gone from 14th to 4th place. And the number of listeners has climbed from 164,000 to 277,000. You know, you hear we got binarial disease from animals. Now, this one, AIDS from monkeys? Who was the first deviant pervert? I mean, While some listeners may be grossed out by what they hear, they still tune in. I think he's disgusting. I woke up one morning and listened to the gynecologist's rap. It, it wasn't very tasteful. The shock announcers have discovered that their brand of humor appeals not just to youngsters, but also to adults. He's got a lot of wit, and he can make you laugh some of the time. Some guy that is just out of his mind uh, uh, trying to make you laugh, I, I think uh, sometimes is a good release for people. You hear about people uh, that have gotten out of their cars in such frustration that they've shot their vehicles. I mean, when it gets that bad in the D.C. area, why not have some wacko uh, out there trying to, trying to make you laugh instead? There's no question that shock radio is popular and profitable. Radio shows with shock formats of one degree or another can be found in about ten cities. 
All of them can be heard in the morning between 6 and 10, and the audience they are targeted to reach is between the ages of 12 and 34. Misses Jeff Pollack, who advises radio stations, what says the shock the format is successful because it enjoys a wide radio. appeal. Think, you know, Sometimes um, people don't give the radio audience enough credit. They don't give the listeners enough credit. They don't give the individual family enough credit. These people can control the existence or non-existence of a radio personality in their community. All they can do is vote and vote quietly and turn the radio off. The controversy over broadcasting obscene language began after a radio station aired a skit in the middle of the day by comedian George Carlin. Seven words you can never say on television. My list was just trying to isolate the words that were always filthy, not the ones that were sometimes dirty. And the original list was... Indeed, responding to complaints, the Federal Communications Commission in 1976 banned broadcasters from transmitting those words, certainly not when children could be listening. And the U.S. Supreme Court agreed. I can't have sex until I have a cup of coffee. I said you can Maybe a cigarette. But it seemed as though those were the only words that couldn't be broadcast. And over the last 10 years, sexually explicit talk shows became big business in the big markets. We've had 20,000 complaints a year. And I think it's the kinds of things that, that are on broadcasting in part that, that has led the commission to realize that, that it has to step back in. And where things are crossing the line of legal indecency, we need to enforce that law. So last week, the FCC warned three radio stations, including one carrying Howard Stern's program, that the standards for obscenity have changed and that sexually explicit or offensive language must stop even during late night hours. We only issued warnings because we thought that's all legally we could do, given that we're changing our standard. Um, now that everyone knows what the new standard is, obviously we will impose more severe sanctions, fines, and, and whatnot. The less regulation, the better, because radio is the press of today. It's simply electronic. But the press is free, radio should be free. This omniscient group is going to decide in Washington, D.C. what is decent or indecent in Phoenix, decent or indecent in Seattle. This isn't the Soviet Union. It used to be the seven dirty words acted as a line over which broadcasters could not go. But now the controversy has opened again. And the dilemma is not only how far broadcasters can go, but how far the government can go in controlling them. And the federal government can kiss my fat boy country butt too as far as... I'm James Walker for Nightline. This is America, as long as I pay...